Yes. 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 Hello. Welcome back. Did you need something, Papa? Nope, I'm good. You ready for the story? It's called Fall of the Snow Prince. Fall of the Snow Prince. An account of the Battle of the Mao's Ring as transcribed by Lokain chronicler to the chieftain and Yalder White Eye. From whence he came we did not know, but into the battle he rode on a brilliant steed of pallid white. Alf we called him, for Alf he was, yet unlike any other of his kind we had ever seen before that day. His spear and armor bore the radiant and terrible glow of unknown magica, and so adorned this unknown rider, see more white than warrior. What troubled, nay, frightened us most at that moment was the call that rose from the elven ranks. It was not fear, not wonder, but an unabashed and unbridled joy, the kind of felicity felt by a damned man who has been granted a second chance at life. For at that time the elves were as damned and near death as ever they had been during the great skirmishes of Solstheim. The Battle of the Most Ring was to be the final stand between Nord and Elf on our fair island, led by Eskramar. We had driven the elven scourge from Skyrim and were intent on cleansing Solstheim of their kind as well. Our warriors, armed with the finest axes and swords Nord craftsmen could forge, cut great swaths through the enemy ranks. The slopes of the most ring ran red with elf blood. Why, then would our, ra our foe rejoice? Could one rider bring such hope to an army so hopeless? To most of our kind, the meaning of the call was clear, but the words were, but a litany of Alvin chants and cries. There were some among us, however, the scholars and chroniclers who knew well the words and shuddered at their significance. The snow prince has come, doom is at hand. There was then a great calm that overcame the owls that still stood. Through their mass the snow prince did ride. And as a longboat slices the icy waters of the folding, he parted the ranks of his kin. The magnificent white horse slowed to a gallop, then a trot. And the unknown elf rider moved to the front of the line at a slow, almost ghost-like pace. A Nord warrior sees much in a life of bloodshed and battle, and is rarely surprised by anything armed combat may bring. But few among us that day could have imagined the awe and uncertainty of a raging battlefield that all at once went motionless and silent. Such is the effect the Snow Prince had on us all, for when the joyous cries of the elves had ended, there remained a quiet known only in the solitude of slumber. It was then our combined host, elf and nord alike, were joined in a terrible understanding. Victory or defeat mattered little that day on the slopes of the Morsing Mountains. The one truth we all shared was that death would come to many that day, victor and vanquished alike. The glorious Snow Prince, an elf unlike any other, did come that day to bring death to our kind, and death he so brought. Like a sudden violent snow squall that rends travelers blind and threatens to tear loose the very foundations of the sturdiest hall, the snow prince did sweep into our numbers. Indeed, the ice and snow did begin to swirl and churn about the elf, as if called upon to serve his bidding. The spinning of that gleaming spear whistled a dirge to all those who would stand in the way of the snow prince, and our mightiest fell before him that day, Alfgi and Vilhand, 
Strom the White, Frida Oakenmond, Hemdall the Frenzied, all lay dead at the foot of the Mosring Mountains. For the first time that day, it seemed the tide of battle had actually turned. The elves, spurred on by the deeds of the Snow Prince, rallied together for one last charge against our ranks. It was then, in a single instant, that the battle of the Mosring came to a sudden and unexpected end. Finna, daughter of Yoffer, a lass of only twelve years, and squire to her mother, watched as the Snow Prince cut down her only parent. In her rage and sorrow, Finna picked up Yoffer's sword and threw it savagely at her mother's killer. When the elf's gleaming spear stopped its deadly dance, the battlefield fell silent and all eyes turned to Snow Prince. No one that day was more surprised than the elf himself at the sight that greeted them all. For upon his great steed the Snow Prince still sat, the sword of Yoffer buried deeply in his breast, and then he fell from his horse, from the battle, from life. The Snow Prince lay dead, slain by a child. With their savior defeated, the spirit of the remaining Galvan warriors soon shattered. Many fled, and those that remained on the battlefield were soon cut down by our broad Nord axes. When the day was done, all that remained was the carnage of the battlefield. And from that battlefield came a dim reminder of valor and skill, for the brilliant armor and spear of the Snow Prince still shined. Even in death, this mighty and unknown elf filled us with awe. It is common practice to burn the corpses of our fallen foes. This is as much a necessity as it is custom for death brings with it disease and dread. Our chieftains wish to cleanse Solsheim of the Alvin Horde in death as well as life. It was decided, however, that such was not to be the fate of the Snow Prince. One so mighty in war, yet so loved by his kin, deserved better. Even in death, even if an enemy of our people, and so we brought the body of the Snow Prince wrapped in fine silks to a freshly dug barrel. The gleaming armor and spear were presented on a pedestal of honor, and the tomb was arrayed with treasures worthy of royalty. All the mighty chieftains agreed this course that the owl should be so honored. His body would preserve would be preserved in the barrel for as long as the earth chose, but would not be offered the protection of our Dalrim, which was reserved for Nord dead alone. So ends this account of the Battle of the Mosring and the fall of the magnificent Alvin Snow Prince. May our gods honor him in death, and may we never meet his kind again in life. Ooh, not bad, not bad. That's the end of the story. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Put it back up there. Well, 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 well. All right. See you, everyone. I'm out of here. See you, Foxy. All right. Today is lost to the ages. In Arkantams I met Katria, a ghost searching for the mythical Ethereum Forge. Together we found one of the four Ethereum shards that make up the key to the forge. She left to search the other shards and the forge itself and urged me to do the same. So, in the first place, well we've been to the first place which is Ark and Tams right there. Now we need to go up here, I think. So, looks like we're going to Kark Waste. Oh, 
hopefully he can take me there. Hey, gone draw. Where do you want to go? Uh, cart wasting. Climbing back and we'll be off. All right. You ready to go yet? Yep. I'm almost getting downright hot now. See you in cart wasting.